So 2015 dawned with my husband of 16 years, my partner of 19 and a half years, telling me he was unhappy. Um, a few days later, he went to a hotel and stayed there for a few days. And a few days after that, he had gotten his own apartment. Gone. Um, as a psychologist, I'd like to think I know something about people, and yet this came completely out of the blue to me. Um, there were no conversations, there was no discussion, there was no couples counseling, he was just out. And I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know that someone could come home and after that much time be like, you know what, I'm out. But it became a thing. Um, abandonment, unfortunately, was not new to me. When I was a kid, my mom left my dad and I when I was pretty young, and she would, had never been my primary caregiver. Uh, despite living about five miles away from me, I would go months without seeing her. She became a pro at making plans with me and canceling. Uh, so with my husband leaving at the time, abandonment was not a new issue in my life. Um, I am someone who is prone to anxiety anyway. I run pretty type A. I think people who get a PhD, that's what you kind of need to do or else you wouldn't be getting a PhD. <laughs> um, and so anxiety and restless nights are not new to me, but the anxiety and physical kind of experience that I had after he left was like something I had never, ever experienced before. I think in looking back, my body was in a state of fight or flight for months. I couldn't sleep. I'm usually an emotional eater. Ben and Jerry are two of my favorite friends. And yet, I really couldn't eat anything, and when I could eat, it wouldn't stay in me anyway. Um, the stomach churn I had was so intense, it was like nothing I had ever experienced. It was, in fact, one of the hardest times of my life, despite battling cancer six years previous to that. It was definitely the hardest thing. But more than the physical symptoms, what I was most concerned about was my heart. I was worried that this experience of him leaving would make me go dark. I was worried that years of therapy, and I do mean years of therapy on the client side, in dealing with issues of my mother and abandonment would be for naught. I was worried that his leaving would reinforce the narrative and through line that I had always had that everybody leaves at some point to trust nobody and just fend for yourself. So I knew I had to actively choose a different path. And so the first thing I started to do was uh, reinvigorate my yoga practice. I've been an on again, off again, more off again yoga <laughs> practitioner for about 15 years. And by on again, off again, I mean it was a good thing. It's like I went in April and then maybe in September. <laughs> um, but I had started to go to yoga. It gave me, I'm an extreme extrovert, so it gave me somewhere to go. It gave me something to do. It gave me people to see. Um, and it gave me a place where I'd get on the mat and the tears would just stream from my face and it was okay. I think that other than your own house, your bestie's house, your therapist's office, probably the safest place to cry is on the mat. And so yoga, I think, in fact, saved my life. So that was, that was the first piece, going to yoga every day. The other thing I did was I started to say yes. And this is the thing I hope you, you take with you tonight. I started to say yes. So when we all struggle, right, and people who love you come and say, what can I do? Can I do this? Can I do that? And we're all like, what do you just say? Uh, that's okay. good, right? So I started practicing yes. Um, I'm not from here. I'm from Baltimore, as Chris said. And so my tribe is pretty spread across the country. And I eventually had to tell people what was going on. And so my friends started offering, do you want me to come? And even though I knew it was inconvenient and it was expensive and it was snowing in Boston like every other day, um, I started to say yes to people. When people offered, hey, do you want to come visit me? I said yes. When people said, you know, I know this is expensive. How about if I split your ticket, your airline ticket? I said yes. When people started to bring me food, even if they were cookies, thank you, Lauren Getty, I said yes. Um, and so I didn't play stoic. And I come by that pretty naturally. I was raised Irish Catholic, so stoic is in my genes. But I knew that I could not get through this time alone, that I needed people. And I said yes. And so just so you know, like we all struggle. And the people in your life, they want to do something. They desperately want to do something, right? There are no right words. There is nothing to say that's going to make your loss, your pain go away. They really want to do something. 
So saying yes made me feel better and let me feel some support and some love. And I think it also made my friends feel like, okay, I can do something. Like I'm showing up, I'm doing something. So I said yes. The other thing I started doing was I started focusing on love, ironically. Um, and I started to buy a lot of shirts that said love. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd buy another shirt and another shirt and I was wearing them to yoga. And it was like, what the hell is going on? But I sort of got addicted to them. And I think that unconsciously, I was trying to bring love in through osmosis. Like that if I wore it on me, it would like infiltrate my system and that I would feel love. Um, I had gone to Texas last July to visit my two best friends from my internship and my friend Andy. Um, I was also posting a bunch on Facebook about love and quotes about love and connection. And he said to me while we were there, he's like, I love this whole love campaign you got going on. I'm like, love campaign? Like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, he's like, you and your shirts and your posting. And I was like, hmm, that's cool. Maybe I got a love campaign on. Um, so the other thing kind of with that is that I started to do is like times when I felt darkest and then like at my shittiest. I remember walking into Target one day, I'd gone to yoga, and my usual routine is like I go to yoga, I go to Trader Joe's, I go to Super Target. And I was walking into Target and feeling like shit. And you know, I was like, you know what, Megan? This is not unprecedented. Like people get divorced, unfortunately, like every freaking day. Like what you are experiencing is not new. And people who have other losses and other trials and tribulations, which I know you'll hear about later tonight in Syracuse, um, that are much harder than what I'm going through. Like there are 7 billion people on the planet. I'm not the only person suffering. So like pull yourself together. I mean, my God, my dad's been divorced twice. My mom's been divorced twice. My stepmom's been divorced once. Like this is not, like I'll get through this. Um, and so that actually helped me to feel like there are a lot of other people who are suffering, right? Every person we meet is carrying some burden that we may or may not know about. And so I started to send out what I started calling love bombs. So when I would feel really crappy, I would get out my note cards and I would send cards to other people in my life who I knew were struggling. My friends were, you know, I had another friend who was going through divorce, another friend who was sick, and other people who were dealing with a myriad of things. And so I would send them cards. Or I'd go, I'd get my phone and I'd send like texts that just said I love you, or a bunch of emojis, because I love emojis, <laughs> to my friends to be like, you know what, you're not alone, I'm out here, I'm thinking about you, I love you. Um, and that felt good, I think it felt good to them, I hope it did. Um, but that made me feel less alone, like it wasn't just me out there. And in that, about not feeling alone, you know how Facebook is a very shiny place, right? Very shiny in terms of everyone posts their best pictures of themselves, I do that too but um, the, their best version when everything is going great. But I got very real on Facebook, not in a whiny, I hope, complainy way, but in a way of not pretending that I had it all together, of saying, you know what, I'm struggling, I'm having a hard time, being on the mat helped today, or I'm connected to all of you. And I did that to help myself feel not so long, and to also to be real and congruent. Those are some of my biggest values of being this person all the time and not hiding behind having a hard time and saying it's okay to struggle. And what I hoped with that was that other people could see that and they could also be real and be like, you know what, I'm having a hard time too. And sharing some solidarity and some ways of like, we got this, we're gonna get this, we're gonna get through this together. So I was very real on Facebook, and hopefully not in a whiny, complaining way. And if you were my Facebook friends, you can tell me later. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to tell you, I'm losing track of things. Um, oh, was the thing about being transparent on Facebook and texts and with people in my life was that I was trying to send out, even though I said I was struggling, I would try and send out a lot of love and a lot of these love bombs. And what started to happen was people that all kept coming back to me. So people, like so many days, I would get a text that would be like, oh, I saw this quote today about love or about connection, they'd send it to me. Or people would see a heart, you know, like a heart rock or some spray paint or whatever, and people will send texts to me like, I saw this today and thought of you. And what was so cool was that the more I focused on love and shared that, my tribe around me and the community of friends and people that I know were also thinking about love and sharing that back. And so it became this reciprocal thing of like love coming, going out and coming in. And it was pretty amazing. I felt like this love revolution was going on and that this 
like troop of love warriors were gathering. It was pretty awesome um, and such a gift to come back to me. And so through all of that, what I realized was that my story is not an abandonment story that my mother's choice, my husband's choice to leave says far more about them than it will ever say about me. And that my story, my story is about love and about saying yes, about showing up, about being seen, about being real, about focusing on love and giving it out and trying to receive it in. And so that's what my story is about. And oh yeah, by the way, a year and a half later, I can say I'm truly grateful he was the one that got away.